Does it have spikes on the top of it? Well, maybe best not to jump on this bad boy's bunce. Has it got a massive shield protecting the front? Well, friend, it's time to dodge past it and kick some bloody spines in. But you know what? The enemies on this list, they have different messages to convey, as their designs could be so off the wall, so utterly out there, that the only thing garnered from fighting them could be usually boiled down into a single word. And that was... What? So let's take a look at them. As I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are eight video game enemies that made you go what? Number eight, Monstrosity of Sin, Dark Souls 3. We begin our whistle-stop tour of weird by stepping into the devastatingly punishing world of Dark Souls. Now, normally Dark Souls enemies are either designed to be as intimidating as possible or to be so foul that the sheer repulsion will inform you to stay away from them at all costs. However, even in this deluge of disgusting sits one enemy who is so utterly gross that it can't help but make you recoil at how odd everything is about it. I'm speaking, of course, about the monstrosity of sin enemy from Dark Souls 3, which to the untrained eye looks like a naked, overweight dude with a massive hand for a face. Now, the first part alone should be enough to make your skin invert as who wants to see John Goodman all oiled up slipping about the place in the buff, but much like the writing for the Walking Dead TV series, it's just gonna get worse from here. Inside this horrific face mouth are rows and rows of slobber-covered teeth, and underneath this hulking beast is a mass of unblinking eyes. I know, right? Hot stuff. Of all the foul beasts encountered in this series, the monstrosity of sin haunts my deepest nightmares. Their design, their attacks, the fact that there's only four of them in the entire game, and the fact that the lore about them is so sparse that it's only ever going to elicit what from every corner of your mind. What is that? What are they doing? What the f***? They drain souls even when they grab you? Ugh, stay away. Number 7. Cruel Cumber, Dragon Quest 9. Whoever said that veggies were good for your health has never, ever encountered this Dragon Quest oddity that is known as the Cruel Cumber, a wobbly-looking cucumber wielding a spear as pointy as its face is dumb, aka very. No, you didn't mishear me. There is indeed a walking, wiggling, sentient vegetable who is out for your blood. Thank you, Dragon Quest. Never, ever change. It's as if the developers wanted to try and top their almighty slime enemy in terms of off-the-wall design, and while the Cruel Cumber might never unseat that holy little blob that is Slime Jesus with the cutest of expressions and bizarre want for your blood, this plant with a poker sure does try. From its jiggly animations to the fact that when it dies it actually ends up impaling itself with its own spear, if you don't find comedy in this at every turn, you may well be dead inside. Oh, and if that's not enough reason to have your head shaking loose, the description of this enemy reveals that the reason that they fight you is because they wanted to be eaten but were poo-pooed by veggie haters and are now taking their pain out on you. Sad, but also hilarious. And also, what? Number 6. Tonbury, Final Fantasy Series Tonbury. For those that are in the know, this name will cause a shudder to ripple through your spine, as despite looking like a cute little green goofball, this is two feet of pain that will leave you six feet under, and also screaming what at the top of your lungs at every given moment. Everybody remembers the first time that they underestimated this little demon, who first showed up in Final Fantasy V but arguably made its biggest impact in Final Fantasy VII, which was obviously the franchise's most widespread entry. Everything you thought you knew about battling in this game is flipped on its head as the Tombree just appears to walk slowly towards you, clutching its little lamp and with a knife that looks like it should have butter on it for how deadly it appears. However, should the Tombree get close enough, he will proceed to shank the ever-loving hell out of one of your party, killing them instantly. T to say that this was a little bit shocking is like saying that Everest is a bit of a hill to climb, and suddenly your best laid plans, along with your party, are left sprawled out on the floor. Never underestimate the Tombree, for it might well be one of the most frightening monsters in the entire franchise, its dead eyes and ever-constant advance signalling your doom. Number 5. The Black Rabbite – Trials of Mana So the Rabbite enemies are pretty much synonymous with the Secret of Mana franchise, seeing as it's these cute little faces that you womp into oblivion straight out of the gate in the original title, to the point where you actually start to feel a little bit sorry for the poor blighters. It seems a bit one-sided to take on a bunny who might need a bit of dental work with a sword of ancient legend. However, that makes the eventual payoff of the Trials of Mana secret uber-boss, the Black Rabbite, all the more potent. At the close of the original game, players tackling the Duran-Angela storyline might get 
get a surprise of a lifetime when, in amidst all of the late game enemies, this cute little black bunny drops down and unleashes hell. This level 99 bad boy bunny will make short work of most parties unlucky enough to encounter it, and it's widely considered to be the hardest enemy in the entire franchise. It attacks immediately with pretty much every single high level spell in the game and can summon level 99 demons to aid it. Not that it needs any bloody help. This shock and subsequent party wipe is enough to stun players into a stupor, showing that what goes around goddamn well comes around to rab bite you in the ass. The remake thankfully toned down this fight a lot, but it's still a battle that will knock your chompers loose. Number 4. Poo Snakes Blue Dragon I mean, I just… what the hell am I even looking at here? This, my friend, is likely the same response that you had upon seeing the Pooh Snake from Blue Dragon for the first time, as its defining characteristics defy all reason. For a start, let's address the stinky snake in the room. Yes, their body does indeed look like a coiled turd. That is a thing that somebody sat down and created. But moving on from this is the fact that this dopey little dump has a mouth on its tummy for some reason. And cute little booties as well, it's like somebody used all of the leftover appendages from other monsters and fed them through a grinder. Plus, that name, come on, it never stood a chance of being taken seriously. However, it's here that the developer actually is playing a little trick on you, as while these are the weakest enemies in the game, and their appearance is utterly laughable, if you let too many of this enemy gather during a battle, you're in for a potential world of poo-related pain. For if enough poo snakes gather, they'll suddenly transform into the Jumbo Poo Snake, which can legitimately wipe out your party with its disgustingly named aged vomit attack. Looks like the poo is indeed on the other foot, should you let this snaky sh** get his mates together. Number 3. Balloon – Wild Arms Franchise the Wild Arms games are criminally underrated RPG experiences, unlike anything else, and their focus on firearms, wildly engaging stories, and brilliant characters are factors that should not be allowed to slip from the public consciousness. However, one image that I could probably do without is a giant floating sack of blood with a face on it that wants to turn my insides into outsides, and yet, thanks to the Arms franchise, this meat zeppelin is a reoccurring horror that players must face. Making matters worse is that, for some unknown reason, this Hindenburger looking bastard is usually one of the first enemies that the player comes across, scarring them for the next 60 plus hours as they wonder what literal fresh hell this gassy meat sack was plucked from. The rest of the enemies in the early areas are nowhere near as wild as this enemy, and it's a rather jaw-dropping moment to encounter one for the first time. Luckily, fighting them goes about as well as a real-world balloon would actually do against sustained pistol fire, but you can never truly shake just how utterly weird this encounter was. Number 2. Belphegor Persona series. When you're dealing with a game that makes your literal innermost nightmares and deepest psychological traits into physical manifestations, of course you're going to end up with a fair few weird and wonderful enemies, and the Persona series does not disappoint in the slightest. From phallic-looking foes to glorious manifestations of the ideal self, there are so many monsters to marvel at, but hands down one that had me on the floor in stitches shaking my head in disbelief has to be Belphegor, who looks like if Punch and Judy had a devil character and that this character was sitting on a giant floating toilet. That's right, this demon is taking a dump on a levitating Lou, and while he did appear as a boss in Shin Megami 2, you can actually recruit this demon Prince of Porcelain to your party from Persona 4 onwards, and his depiction gets especially grimy when you see that his description in Persona 5 lists him as the Ambassador of Filth, a title, by the way, that somebody has to use on their dating profile. Please, somebody do it for me. Yet this is only the tip of the turdberg, as it turns out that Belphegor is based on a real-life piece of Christian folklore. In this, Belphegor is the chief demon of sloth, hence why he can't even be bothered to shift his buns from the toilet. Luckily, he's much more motivated in Persona 5, where he offers up some pretty useful skills, but still, weird. And number 1. Joe Head Joe – Skull Monkeys the description of Joe Head Joe on Skull Monkey's wiki lists the enemy as a rather odd individual. And you know what? I'm calling absolute shenanigans on this because to regular minds, looking at Joe Head Joe is like opening the Ark of the Bloody Covenant and having your face melted off as this thing is utterly mind blowing. Looking like somebody stole the assets from a Mortal Kombat ripoff and then stuck some arms and legs to it, Joe Head Joe is a massive human face that has an axe to grind. As it charges you, shooting fire from its mouth and even forcing its own eyes out of its skull to try and 
force you off the edge of the arena. Now, while it is a ludicrously easy encounter on paper, you might end up dying just because your brain has entered a state of complete shutdown trying to comprehend what you're bloody looking at. Joe Head Joe was actually created as an in-joke, with the face itself being that of the game's developer, Joseph Sanabria. But no matter whose mug it was on this beast, our own heads would still likely be on the ground trying to make sense of things. And there we go, my friends. Those were eight video game enemies that made you go, what? I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. As always, I've been Jules. You can go follow me over on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero, or you can swing by Live and Let's Dice. That's Dice with a C, where I do all of my streaming outside of work. It'd be great to see you over there, my friends. But before I go, I just want to say one thing. I hope you're treating yourself well, both mentally and physically, my friend, because you deserve love, happiness, and respect. We all do as human beings, and do not let anything or anyone else tell you otherwise, alright? Right? I want you to go out there and absolutely smash your life goals today, alright? Big love from me to you. As always, I've been Jules, you have been awesome. Never forget that, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.